I've recently made a video about how to shoot time lapses of sunrise directly against the sun. I will put a link at the end of this video. But in that video I concentrated on the photography part, while in today's video I will show my complete post-processing workflow. Time lapses of day to night or night to day transitions require a different post-processing workflow compared to regular ones, as the intensity and the color of light changes constantly. There are two possible workflows. One involves Lightroom and the LR time lapse, a software specifically designed for day to night transition with focus ramping. I have already published an in depth analysis of LR time lapse, please refer to this video if you are interested. I will put a link at the end. In this video, I will show you a workflow involving Lightroom and After Effects, but most other video editors like Premiere Pro, Final Cut, DaVinci Resolve, Sony Vegas can be used in a similar way. The sunrises analyzed in that video were all shot without any focus ramping. I will soon publish at least two more videos about sunrise time lapses, one involving exposure ramping another one without the full sun on the image. So if you are interested in time lapses, I would suggest to subscribe to my channel. The home of fearless time lapse heroes. Generally for time lapses I shoot about 300 photos, but in the case of sunrises or sunset, I tend to take around 900 in order to catch the entire transition, and then I eventually cut out part of the darkest or brightest parts. I import the images into Lightroom, obviously as RAW files. I organize each time lapse in its own specific folder. There are several ways to batch process several photos in Lightroom. My favorite method is to edit a single image and then copy and paste the attribute to the others. I will show how to do it later on. I generally select the last photo of the folder, the brightest one. But if the process have gone too far, the last one might be way overexposed. In this case I scroll back until the last one with acceptable exposure. I press D to get into develop mode, I start by going to the tab Lens Correction, where I check Remove Chromatic Aberration and Enable Profile Correction. The lens used is in most cases recognized and the distortion automatically adjusts. Then I go to the basic panel and set the color profile to Adobe Landscape, in my opinion much better than the standard Adobe color. In most cases I reduce a bit the very high dynamic range of the image by lowering the highlights and lifting the shadows. And maybe I also adjust the white balance, even though during the transition from night there will be a constant shift of colors, so it is better to adjust it in a dynamic way in After Effects. This is generally all I do in Lightroom. Now I press Ctrl Alt C to copy all the adjustments made to this image, then Ctrl A to select all the images in the folder, and then Ctrl Alt V to paste them into all other images. This process will take 3 to 5 minutes, time for a cup of coffee. I much prefer to import the photos to After Effects as RAW files. In this case I will be able to do all the color correction in a dynamic way in After Effects. The downside of this method is that it is more resource intensive, so a good computer is needed and the process will be a bit slower, but the result much better. If your computer is not up to the task, the alternative is to convert the images into JPEG. In order to do that press G to go to the grid view, then select all images by Ctrl A, click on the export button and then choose a location for the new folder and specify JPEG on the file settings. The workflow in After Effects will be the same, but the result uh, will not be as good as when using RAW files. But before we move to After Effects, let me show you something else. When working with individual photos, for this kind of scene, I would use the Dehaze slider, which adds plenty of structure to the sky and clouds. 
and perhaps also vibrance. But in the case of time lapses, do not use any of the slider under presence texture, clarity, dehades, vibrance, or saturation. As they might cause strong, unwanted color shifts during the final video, especially in the case of dehades. Also, you have noticed that there is a dust spot on the top right of the image. Well, actually, there are a few of them. Time to clean the sensor. You might be tempted to use the spot removal tool in Lightroom, but it is much better to fix them in After Effects. Let me show you why. After rendering the file, we notice very clear that the area where we remove the dust spots is flickering heavily with blobs of colors because that spot is sampled for another area that is constantly changing color. Also, notice that when the sun breaks out of the cloud, there is a huge shift in colors, partly due to the heavy use of the haze. We are now in After Effects. To import the images, I press Ctrl-I to summon the import page. I navigate to the relevant folder and click on the first file, making sure that camera raw sequence is checked. This camera raw window opens to make some adjustments if needed, but we can click on OK since we have already made the adjustments in Lightroom. Now we can right click on this icon on the project panel and choose New Comp from Selection. Then we need to modify the original resolution of the photos to the correct one for video. So we go to the menu Composition, choose Composition Settings, and in this dialog box, in the scroll down menu setting, we choose the desired resolution and frame rate. In most cases, 4K or HD 1080. Since I'm using a Nikon D850, which generates files bigger than 8K, I prefer to choose 8K 24 frames per second. You can see now that the size of the final video is smaller than my original file, so I can reframe if I so wish. Later on, if needed, I could also zoom in or out during the video, or zoom and pan, as I will show you later. Now let's go back to full size view by using the scroll down menu and choosing fit. In this series of time lapses, I have not used any exposure ramping. The advantage of this method is that the final video will be seamless without any jump cuts. But the downside is that the first part of the footage will be very, very dark since we have exposed it with the aim of avoiding overexposure of the final part. For time lapses, I use an Icon D850, which has a great ability to recover information from very dark shadows. So, first of all, we want to brighten dynamically the first part of the sequence. In order to do that, we highlight our sequence in the composition panel and tap Ctrl Alt Y to create an adjustment layer. Then we go to the Effect menu, Color Correction and we choose Lumetri Color. This is a broad set of tools for color correction, containing practically all we need for grading our footage. Please note that Lumetri Color is also available in Premiere Pro, and it works in exactly the same way. We start by bringing the playhead to the first frame. We can do this by pressing Home. Then we open the Adjustment layer. Open Effect, Lumetri Color, Basic Correction, Tone. We can now increase very dramatically the exposure value, let's say 7 stops. Then we click on the stopwatch to the left to set a keyframe. We also lift the shadows to 90 and again set a keyframe. We then go to the last frame by pressing end and set the two values back to zero, thus creating more keyframes at this point. So we will have a very strong boost of exposure and shadows at the very beginning, and then those values will be constantly reduced until going to zero at the very end. I also noticed that the highlights are too strong on the last frame, so we lower them by 90, set the keyframe, and go back to the first frame and set it to zero. Now let's start pre-rendering the video by hitting zero on the numeric keyboard. 
but before make sure to choose quarter in the scroll down menu for video quality, otherwise the process will be much longer. Also, if we choose full, only a small portion of the video will be rendered. The first time we pre-render the sequence, it will take several minutes. Time to check your mail, play a couple of songs on your guitar, or watch one of my other videos. Well, actually, subscribe to my channel will be a very good idea. Once we start adding adjustments, the process will be faster, as it has already been loaded into RAM. After visualizing the sequence, we notice that the first couple of seconds are too dark, so we can trim it. Let's move the three keyframes we have at the beginning and bring them to two seconds. Then we trim the sequence by moving the tab at the left. We can now right click on the grey bar and choose Trim Comp to Work Area to visualize only the active part of our composition. If we go to the last frame by pressing End, we see that the shadows are too bright. Let's lower them a bit. Better. The scene gains more contrast. We can jump to a specific point of the sequence by clicking anywhere on the grey bar. As you can see, the playhead will be moved to that point. Do not worry if in the darker parts the image looks grainy and noisy. This is because we are in quarter resolution. If we go to full, you can see that things improve significantly. Regarding white balance, in my opinion, it is way too cool and bluish in the first part, while it looks more or less correct at the end. This time, instead of starting from the first frame, let's place the playhead at about 5 seconds and set a keyframe for temperature here, with a value of, let's say, 40, and another one with a value of 0 at the end. In this case, 40 will be the value from the beginning of the sequence up until the first keyframe, and only then the value will start to decrease. Once the sequence has been pre-rendered, we can scroll through by sliding the playhead. We can see that the white balance is still too cool, up until a bit after the sun comes out. More or less here, 22 seconds. So I set a keyframe with a value of 0, then go back to the previous one and increase the value to 60. A great way to navigate between keyframes is to use J for previous and K for next. We can then adjust the position of the two keyframe to fine-tune the color transition to our taste. Finally, I noticed that in the last few seconds the sequence is a bit too warm, so in the keyframe at the end I bring the temperature value to minus 20. Better. I am now going to quickly show you several great tools that can be used to improve or modify our sequence. But just a quick disclaimer, my aim is to show you the tools and how to use them. It is not to show the best way to color grade this footage, simply because there is not a best way. Everyone has his own style and taste, and also the processing will depend on what the final customer wants or where the video is ending up. As an example, if it is meant for Instagram, I will be much bolder than what I actually like, because on Insta the wow effect is very important. You might have noticed that towards the end there is a nasty green flur on the lower left part. We can reframe the image. Make sure that the comp itself is highlighted and not the adjustment layer. Let's back up on our view using this scroll down menu or the mouse wheel. We can now move the image to the left and even zoom in a tiny bit by opening Transform and choosing a scale of 105%. Let's go back to Fit View. Much better. Let's go to our Lumetri Color Adjustment layer. If we open Creative, we can use Split Toning to add a specific color to the highlight and or to the shadows. Generally, the highlights will be around the orangey, yellowish, reddish tones, while for the shadows is often bluish ones. The famous orange and teal look, very popular in recent years. I'm not really sure if in this specific sequence I would use it, but it is often quite effective, especially in the highlights. You can play around with the colors and the intensity to your taste, and can toggle the effect on and off 
by clicking on the active box. We can also modify individual colors. Let's say that we want this red around the sun to be more orangey, sort of tobacco-like, slightly darker and a bit less saturated. So we open curves. We start with hue versus saturation. With the high dropper we select the color we want to modify and we slightly lower the saturation. We proceed in the same way for U versus U, until we get our desired color. And finally, U versus Luma to make it a bit darker. You can always check the before and after for each individual adjustment or for the three of them. Yes, much nicer. Of course, all these adjustments can be done locally by using masks. Let's say that we want to reduce the intensity of the blue in the shadows, which is certainly too strong, but we don't want to affect the blue on the sky and the sea. So we add another instant solumetry color in another adjustment layer. Then with the pen tool we draw a mask to isolate the area. We better back up in our view a bit while we draw it. As you can see, something funny happens because we haven't entered any value in Lumetri Color, so let's just add a value of 10 to the shadows. Once we finish drawing, we add a good feather to our mask, let's say 90 points. We can then drastically decrease the saturation for the blue and purple. And as you can see, the effect is restricted to the area on the coast. We still have our dust spots, remember? Let me show you the best way to get rid of them. I add a new adjustment layer by pressing Ctrl Alt Y. Go to the menu Effects, Noise and Grain, and then Dust Scratches. In the icon menu at the top, we choose the Ellipse tool and draw a circle around our spots, a bit larger than the spot itself. Then, in the effect control, we set the radius somewhere between 60 and 70. And in the mask generated when we created our circle, we add a nice feather of around 30, to smoothen the edges. And the spots are history. And since we have plenty of resolution, we might want to add a zoom and pan movement, as if we were flying in the direction of the sun. We could use either null point or pre-composing. In this case I prefer pre-composing, since we have a mask and the dust spots which might move independently in the process. So we select the three layers, right click and choose pre-compose, which is basically like grouping them so that they will move together. We go to the first point and set a keyframe for scale and one for position. Then we go to the end and set the scale to, let's say, 150% and adjust the position to our taste. Every time I post-process a video or time-lapse, at the end of my workflow I always use the legendary Neat Video 5, the best noise killer on the market ever. I could not sleep at night without it. I've done a specific video about Neat Video 5, you will find a link on screen right now if you want to watch it. And this is the result of our efforts. Rock and roll. I will soon post at least another video about sunrise time lapses, this time with exposure ramping. So make sure to subscribe to my channel to be notified. Bye for now.